artificial intelligence bulk test coming up. Hey, this is Scott Widenkivowitz, a storyteller with a camera talking about all the things photographers like you and I are thinking about. In this video, we are going to be taking Photolemur version 3 and putting it through the artificial bulk test. So I just got done photographing a bridal shower. Never thought I would do one of those in my life, but I just did one. And I had 500 photos to call through. Over 500, really. I've narrowed it down to the best 218 photos, but I've not edited them yet. I have not retouched them. And this was a really interesting situation because the venue was very difficult to work with. Now, I brought two Godox wireless mono lights. These are strobes that have the batteries that can be attached to the back and they don't have to be plugged into a wall. The room where this event was, the room where this party was, was separated into three sections. The first section was a wall of windows, which was nice because there was a lot of light. And the ceiling was low. The next part of the room was in the middle and it was a higher ceiling, but it was dark. The light from the windows didn't really reach that middle area. And then the third area, which is actually by the front door, was also dark and it was also a low ceiling. Now, I did not have an on-camera flash. I only used these wireless strobes. But because of the room layout and the weird ceilings and light situations, I could only have the strobe in the middle area where it was a higher ceiling and still dark. That means that I had to constantly turn on and off the, on, with the remote that was on my hot shoe. I had to constantly turn on and off the flash. And it also means that when the flash was off, I had to constantly bump up the ISO. Now I was using the Nikon D850, so it was no problem to handle the high ISO, but was what, what this wind up causing me is having 218 photos where some are lighter already because of the strobe and some are darker because of lack of strobe or you know, and having to bump up the ISO and things like that. So the lighting conditions are different. So it's gonna take me a little bit to go through and edit these manually. So I thought this was the perfect opportunity to see what Photolemur version three could do for 218 photos in bulk that are already gonna be difficult to work with from a human standpoint. So here we are, here are, here's a folder of 218 photos, okay? Now I'm gonna take these raw files. Now in the last video, if you recall seeing my last video, I said don't work with raw files. Now the reason why I said that is I don't like software touching my raw files when I don't know if it's going to make any edits, add any weird metadata to it, stuff like that. But Photolemur really should do its best work from a raw file. So what I've done is I've actually taken the raw files from my Lightroom picks, from, the, from my selection in Lightroom. I've taken those raw files, created a folder on my desktop with those raw files specifically. So they're not the original raw files that I would be working with in Lightroom, which are non-destructive. It's actually going to be, you know, raw files that are just a copy of them. That way, just in case Photolemur does something, I am using a beta of Photolemur version three. Just in case Photolemur version three does something odd to my raw files, my actual original raw files are not gonna be damaged. So the first thing I'm gonna do is select everything and just drag them all here. You can see 218 photos and boom, it's gonna load up all the thumbnails. Now, it's gonna take a little bit for it to go through all these and load all the thumbnails. And you'll see it's still not loaded all the way yet. It's gonna take a while. And then once it's done, once I'm comfortable that it's seeing every single preview inside of Photolemur, I will then click the export button and export it to another folder to see what it does. As you can see, dark light, dark light, dark light. So there's a ton of, of, uh, of problems that a human would have to work through with editing all these photos. So I'm, I'm gonna be curious to see how it does with all of these and let's let them all load. So I'm gonna hit pause, let all these load because you don't, there's no reason for you to sit here and watch them just load one by one and I'll be back before I hit export. 
Okay, so I had to come back to this because it just crashed. Now, <laughs> um, I'm going to try it again and see if it works. But if it doesn't, well, then that just ruined this test because, well, that answered a question. Can it handle that many raw files from an... Could a, could a professional actually use it? Well, first, not yet. Let's see. Let's try this again. All right, so we're going to hit select all and drag. Maybe what I'll do is I won't wait, and I'll just, yeah, I'll let it try one more time. If it crashes again, then maybe I won't let them all load, and I'll just hit export. So let, I'll let them load, and let's see what happens. Okay, so now I am going to hit export, and I'm going to export it to disk. And I'm going to choose the folder I want it to go to, and then hit save. And let's watch the magic happen. Now, I'll let it video sit here and record while it goes through the first couple images. Let's see if it actually shows it scanning the images and, you know, and whatnot. Right now it's pre-processing, so it's probably doing a quick view of them, which you would have thought they would do as it's loading all these thumbnails, but let's, let's see. And then uh, I'll pause it because I don't want to sit here and... I don't want you to have to see it edit 218 photos, but, um, you know, it is what it is. So it looks like it's actually doing it behind the scenes. I'm not seeing, like, the nice cool algorithm that that uh, examines to see if there's faces and whatnot. So I'm going to hit pause for now. And actually, you know what? Let's do this. All right. So here's the folder they're all going to go to. So um, they're not there yet. Saving your great images. So it looks like it's saving, but it's not saving yet. All right, so I'm gonna hit pause and we'll see what happens when it's all done. Okay, so it looks like it's going to take a while. It only did two images and look at the bar all the way down here. Um, so I'm gonna actually stop recording, let it keep going, just so it uses less resources on my computer and maybe this will speed up. And then I'll come back and start recording when it's done again. But before I do that, I just wanna show you one real quick thing. So here is an original raw file. You, you will actually see that uh, this is actually just a little bit over, a little bit bright. Uh, the light stand is over here, which I'm not too, too concerned about because the strobe's right above it, but I could remove it. I'm not, not gonna do that. Even as a human, I'm not gonna do that. I just, it's not that big of a deal to me. Um, and it won't be to the, to, the, uh, to the family as well, but I want to show you that this is actually the original untouched. And then this is what Photolemur did. You can see it brought down the, the highlights here, but it didn't adjust the white balance at all. So that's a little interesting, but that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, I'm going to hit stop recording to clear up some RAM and then I will be back once this is all done. So as a quick follow up, it has now been about 40 minutes. And, well, you can see it hasn't got much further. Um, there are 26 photos done out of the 218. And uh, this might take me all day. <laughs> so uh, just from experience, I can get through 218 photos in about an hour, an hour and a half maybe, of some basic edits. Now, I don't see Photolemur doing anything advanced, like skin retouching as far as like removing like major blemishes or things like that. But um, it should be doing things like white balance correction. It should be doing things like some exposure correction, stuff like that. So we'll, we'll see, but, you know, looks like it's going to take all day for this to finish. So I have my doubts. We'll see. Okay, so now it's been a while. It's been almost two hours. And it's still not even halfway through. So I'm going to stop it. But I wanted to show what has been done so far and some of my thoughts. Because I've been previewing these as they're being made. So what I'm going to do is just select all these. And I'm going to go to the grid. I want you to see that the white balance has not been adjusted for any of the photos. Not even one. Okay. These are still very cool. These are still very warm. Some of these are just right. The ones that had the strobe in it, as I said, there were three sections to this room. So the room that had the strobe, the white balance is perfect. 
the two rooms that did not have the strobe, I was dealing with mixed light with daylight and tungsten. Then I was also dealing with, I was dealing with another room that was a mix between tungsten and then sometimes if the door opened, tungsten and daylight. Now you can see that not only are the, is the white balance not correct, but the brightness was not corrected for the subject on some of these photos as well. So you can see right here that the actual um, bride-to-be is dark. But you can see that these are actually well, well exposed. Now I want to scroll down and you can see here are a couple that also, uh, some are darker, some are lighter, but when it actually did when the exposure was great, it did a pretty good job of getting the colors to look really, really nice. Now, this is one I really expected, a very simple photo. I really expected it to, to just get this right. And it didn't brighten it. It didn't correct the white balance. And it just was kind of an enhancement of color. And that's really it. But as we go through things, you'll see that some of the photos like this one just look really nice. So this was one of those that were a, mix, a mixture of colors. A mixture of of light uh, of light between you know daylight and tungs and tungsten, and the exposure was really good. I had enough time to swap and get the perfect exposure. It was these were more staged photos than than candid, and you can see that the skin tones look nice. They pop off the background. It's just overall a great a great photo, and you can see we're ready at the end because it's still it's still going. But even here you can see that. It again, there it's popping now. Not much was done again. It's really just a little bit of contrast, a little bit of color enhancement. It didn't do anything that I wouldn't have done anyway. It just did it automatically. Where I could have just hit auto in Lightroom, probably would have been the same thing. It didn't in Lightroom, by the way, it would have done the white balance as well. It would have corrected it for white balance, whereas this is not correcting for white balance. Um, so it's still going like this. <laughs> these should have been corrected. The colors in this should have been right. Uh, the, there shouldn't be blue tones here, but it just, it just didn't do it. Um, you can look at this one. This should have been brighter, but it didn't do it. I would have brightened this. So, and, and by the way, it's still going. It's still going and it's not even halfway through. So I'm going to hit cancel because I just, I just, I can't wait. But I, I just want to point out that uh, it could have, if I wanted to, edited all the photos. It would have done a decent job editing all the photos. I don't think, for professional, I would not do this as a replacement for a workflow. However, I will say that anybody who is a consumer, who is a mom and dad and just wants quick photo edits, it might be the perfect thing because it'll do just enough to get you by. But if a photo is too dark, I don't think it's going to fix that because I'm not seeing it do that from raw files. So I don't think it's going to fix that. But uh, I'm still impressed with the fact that I you that something like this exists, that you don't need bulky software like Lightroom in order to do bulk AI edits. But again, I'm skeptic, like I said in the previous video about this. And uh, yeah, I, d I won't be using it for my own workflow, but it's nice that I'll be able to recommend this to people who need something like this, who want something that's faster, you know, the typical mom and dad are going to have photos from iPhones and Android phones and just little point and shoot cameras. They're not going to have, you know, the, the high end professional DSLRs or, or, or mirrorless cameras that produce these super high quality raw files. They won't be using raws. They'll be using JPEGs that are quick and easy. And in fact, if I was to go here and start over last quick note, and if I was to take one of these photos, let's say this, oh, let's go to one that was a little bit dark. Let's say I was to go to this one and I was to drag this JPEG in, it'll be much faster, right? it will be much faster than it would with raw files. And it's possible that, who knows, it might actually <laughs> enhance one that it quote unquote already enhanced. So you never know what, what might happen. But anyway, um, that's Photolemur version three doing bulk testing. Again, I had to stop it because it was taking over two hours. It would have taken all day to get through 218 photos from the raw files of a Nikon D850. It would go much faster if it was JPEGs or if it was a lesser quality, you know, raw file. I hope you enjoy this video. I publish new videos every Monday and Thursday whenever possible. So click that subscribe button, karate kick that notification bell. You don't want to miss it.